life and ministry. He is a medical doctor. He's stepped away from the daily practice of medicine. God called him to the evangelistic field. And so he's evangelizing and uh, very, very close to our family. He was Rebecca's father's personal doctor in the last year or so of his life, his primary physician. And so uh, very near and dear to our hearts. And we thank God for him and his ministry. And he's been evangelizing, and over the course of the last couple of years, God has been using him through tent revivals, the Jesus tent revivals specifically. And through these tent revivals, God is doing miraculous things, many miracles, signs and wonders that are taking place. Many people who are receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, being baptized in Jesus' name, experiencing New Testament conversion, New Testament salvation, and really impacting transforming the spiritual dynamics of communities. And so this August, we are going to be hosting the Jesus Tent Revival, August 9th, 10th, and 11th. And I believe it, it is going to be transformational for our community and for our church as we continue to focus on our vision. What's our vision? Souls, that's our vision. I know we're in the middle of a campaign, but our, our vision is not a building or, or finances. Our, our vision is souls. And so we're gonna continue to emphasize reaching the lost souls of our community. And so you're gonna see a video that's gonna play here in just a moment. And I, I wanna thank Dr. Anderson for his commitment to get here today. He, he drove almost two hours to get to the Tulsa airport this morning and they told him his flight was canceled. And so he checked Google and realized that if he started driving right then from Tulsa, Oklahoma, that he could make it to Heath, Ohio by 6.30 p.m. And so he just took off driving. And he just got here a little bit ago because he's committed to reaching the lost. He's committed to impacting communities with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're so thankful for his commitment being here tonight. Turn your attention to the screen for this short video. Amen. Let's, let's stand together today. Thank you for uh, watching that video with us. We just wanted to show you a little bit of, of some of what we get the privilege of doing. I'm going to turn the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. And I want to give tremendous honor to uh, Pastor Enzi and his family. Like he said, we, we love them so much and, and just appreciate them and are privileged to have some history with them. And it's great to meet Bishop here tonight and see all of you in this place. I feel a heavy move of the Holy Ghost and a heavy conviction of what God wants to do here tonight. And uh, man, I hope I can get across what's in my heart. I think that, and really this came together somewhere along that drive. So if you'll entertain me, I'm going somewhere with this, but it's all just buried in the title. I want you to say revival starters. Revival starters. I want you to say revival starters. revival starters. God called you to be a revival starter. Come on, anybody can show up at a revival. 
anybody can be at a concert, anybody can hear a message, but few there be that will start the fire. If I had a match in this place today, I'm telling you, one match applied to this building in the right place has enough force to take the whole thing down. I'm telling you, one apostolic on fire for God in a city has a power, come on, has a force, has a momentum, has an impact that can make a difference. Jesus said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be, not you might be, not you may be, not you could be, not some of you will be, not the extrovert will be, not the rich will be, not the educated will be, and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. It's the will of God in this city that we go to the uttermost. Every bar ought to know the name of this church. Every hospital ought to know the name of this church. Every marriage that is hurting. Everybody that is sick. Everybody that is in addiction and is bondage. Come on, somebody. You've got the answer. And his name is Jesus. God, I pray right now that you would set a revival in, in momentum, that you would set a revival in this place unlike one that we have ever seen before. Use me. Somebody pray that way. Use me, oh God, to reach people I thought were unreachable. Use me to reach my family, my friends, my coworkers. Do something in our midst that is bigger than us. In the name of Jesus, we pray and somebody say amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Jesus, we love you. We lift you up. We bless you tonight. Amen. You may be seated today. Somebody say revival starters. Forgive me for the protracted introduction, but I have to. I have to. How many in this room have heard of the Welsh Revival? Yeah. There's a few in here that have heard of the Welsh Revival. Let me fill you in if you're not in that mix. There was a revival that preceded Azusa that set the stage for what God would do later. In the early 1900s, there's a young evangelist who would be named Evan Roberts. But his story begins because he walked into a tent-style meeting. It was called the God Meeting. He was just young and in Bible school when he walked into an event. And in that event, the power of God so overcame him that he had a moment he cried out and begged God to bend him. He records in that deep moment uh, this passage. I felt a living power pervading my bosom. It took my breath away and my legs trembled exceedingly. This living power became stronger and stronger until I felt it would tear me apart. My whole bosom was a turmoil and if I would not have prayed, I would have burst. I felt on my knees and my arms over the seat in front of me my face was bathed in perspiration and tears flowed in streams I cried out bend me bend me I was filled with compassion at that moment for those that must bend at the judgment and I wept following that the salvation of the human soul was solemnly impressed on me and I felt ablaze with the desire to go through the length and the breadth of Wales to tell of the Savior. That one moment changed that man so significantly that he took off down the streets preaching the gospel. I'm telling you the main prerogative of the church is not that we are a concert hall for talented music. It is not that we are articulate orators. It is that we provide a God moment. It's that we facilitate the bending of the human soul. 
God did not put a church in this city to entertain it. God did not put a church in this city to pacify it. My friend, we bend the man and bend the woman after God. We cause addicts to be delivered. We cause the sick to be healed. The blind to see. The deaf to hear. The empty to be filled. We're in the bending business. His fervor for God was so contagious that it broke into revival across that nation. And his message was such that God must also bend you. The story says that he would break into nightly revival across the country between church, churches and tents. He was traveling with a revival team of lay leaders. He would travel with a handful of spirit-filled young people, often including spirit filled young women. The meeting would go on for many hours, often more than 10 hours a night without a single break. Uh, People would lose sense of time uh, and churches were so full that crowds would gather outside until they could barely squeeze their way through the door. Those meetings were not the traditional, my friend. Uh, Often they say that the ministers would just sit down totally unable to preach uh, or even even understand the phenomena that was taking over their sedate churches. I want to see a move of God so significant in this city that ministers are perplexed and confounded. I want to see a move of God in awakening in the region where people come from wide and far to experience his power. By 1904, thousands would fill churches. They would lean over the railings. They would pack every pew, squeeze into every spare corner. They would stay in those services of intense emotion. And it wasn't just once a week, but it was happening night after night after night across the nation of Wales. This meeting was characterized by that supernatural leading. There was a total spontaneity as to what took place. It wasn't directed by preachers or officials, but the spirit. The London Daily, that is the newspaper wrote this you feel that the thousands before you have become merged into one you can watch what they call the influence of the power of the spirit playing over the congregation as an ebbing wind plays over the surface of a pond and all of this vast quivering throbbing singing praying exultant multitude is intensely conscious of the all-pervading influence of some invisible reality that they call the Spirit of God. God wants to send a revival to this city that is uniform and nature, where every single person aligns with the King. God wants to send a revival where hundreds, nay, thousands come to experience His Spirit. God wants to be the center of attention. God wants to occupy every mind and heart in the city. Remarkable religious revival. This is another author writes, a remarkable religious revival is now taking place for some days. The chapel has been besieged by dense crowds of people that are unable to obtain admission. Such excitement has prevailed that the road on which the chapel is situated has been lined with people from end to end. The congregation has been praying until singing until 2.30 in the morning. Shopkeepers close early to get a place in the chapel. The steel workers throng in their very work clothes. One local pastor at the time wrote in a later letter that there are deeply intelligent but unconverted men that had always led rich exemplary lives. They now feel such sorrow of soul that they come in trembling, turning deathly pale and crying out for prayer. Others very different in their past record were sodden in drink and so overwhelmed that they professed to be unable to continue in their drunken way but were forced to the chapel refusing to uh, refusing to fail to give themselves to the Lord I'm telling you that God is trying to reach after every last one it doesn't matter how high it doesn't matter how low it doesn't matter if they're black or 
white, Spanish, or English. God wants to reach every last one. Do you study the Welsh revival? Very interesting. They say businesses would close early every single evening because the entire city was in church. The police force had a litter. This is historically recorded. The police force had layoffs as crime was now at an all-time low. Football teams, entire football teams were disbanded because both the audience and the players had lost interest during the revival. Books and magazines were burned and replaced with a record sale of Bibles until the stock ran out. Bars went out out of business nationwide as alcohol consumption plummeted. Come on, somebody. I don't just want to see another 10 or 20 in the building. I thank God for that. But what about a city that has a spiritual awakening? What about more than visitation but a lasting revival what about breakthrough what about harvest come on generations that will serve God I'm talking about breaking cycles. I'm talking about breaking addiction. I'm talking about going to church, realizing everybody you work with is getting baptized and receiving the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about going to church and you're watching the town drunk receive the Holy Ghost. On the other side, the police officer receiving the Holy Ghost. Come on, your neighbor receiving the Holy Ghost. I love that this pastor wrote it this way. He said, men who had spent all in riotous living, they had not taken one penny home in 17 years, now took it all home. Houses became decently furnished. Women and children became decently clad. The secular establishments of depravity became practically empty as the fear of God had fallen upon them for this time. Bridges and walls, instead of covered with obscene remarks, were now covered with lines from the Bible and hymn book. The streets would echo with hymns rather than the drunkard's songs. I want to tell you the solution to the rampant sin that we see in the world. It's not picking on them. It's not hating on them. The answer they need is in this room right now. If we could ever get what's out there in here, I tell you what, God will turn it upside down. That Welsh revival paved the way for the Azusa Street Revival. I won't spend as much time on this because many of you may know about it. But on April 14, 1906, it was one man. Just like the Welsh Revival started with one man. April 14, 1906 is a story that starts with another single man. William Seymour was a poor African-American preacher with one eye. He had been preaching about receiving the Holy Spirit but had not received it himself. He gets locked out of a church, padlocked out of a church. And instead of getting discouraged, he started praying and fasting that God would fill him with the Holy Ghost. I want you to know there's many in this city that are hungry to receive what you have got in this place. There are many that would love to go to bed with the peace you go to bed with. There are many that want your love, your joy. Come on, somebody. And the answer only comes by the Holy Ghost. He's, he, he, he set out on 10 days of prayer and fasting. And on the last night, he had been up praying the entire night. And at the Bonnie Bray house, God filled William Seymour with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, after he got the Holy Ghost, he got on fire for the Holy Ghost. Some of you know exactly what that's about. Because when you got it, you wanted to tell everybody that you knew. You wanted your parents parents to have it. You wanted your classmates to have it. You wanted your co-workers to have it. So William Seymour started that prayer meeting and he just kept it rolling. Then more came. More came. More came. I, I saw that Bonnie Bray house, that tiny little thing and, and it's funny. You look at it and you think man that fit maybe 30 people. They had packed hundreds in the house that were staying up through the night seeking the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
so many. In fact, at one, one of those nights, the entire deck collapsed off the house because so many people were filling the inside and outside to hear what was going on that it couldn't take the weight. Finally, they had to move to a bigger building and Azusa Street grew and it grew and it grew. Why? Because God wants revival. God wants revival. He doesn't care who it comes from. He doesn't care what city it's in. God is invested in the rich, in the poor, in the black, in the white, in the Spanish, in the English. Come on, somebody, if he could use Seymour to start revival, he can use you. You don't need to be a minister. You don't need to be a graduate. You don't need to be rich. You don't need to be a theologian. God just wants a revival starter. I was reading this about it. They say, no instruments of music are used. None are needed. No choir. The angels have been heard by some in the spirit. No collections are taken. No bills have been posted to advertise the meetings. No church organization is behind it. All who are in touch with God realize as soon as they enter the meeting that the Holy Ghost is the leader. If we could ever get this thing focused on the cross with all of our hunger and desperation, anybody you take with you to that cross will be forever changed. My friend, revival is not a gimmick. It is not hype. You cannot fake it. But if you bring somebody to the power that changed you, it will change them. I don't care how hard they look. I don't care how disinterested. Come on. If it worked for you, it'll work for them. Among the first-hand accounts, they were blind that received their sight. Diseases cured instantly. Immigrants would walk in and sometimes hear in their native and fluent language. They would hear German or Yiddish or Spanish or more languages being spoken by entirely uneducated members of the congregation as they were worshiping and receiving the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues for the very first time. So yes, blind saw, lame walk, deaf heard, and the empty left filled. It may be one of history's greatest modern Pentecostal revival yet it started with one man the Welsh revival started with one man I want to say something really clear today that a great move of God is not waiting for a great mass or multitude of people to get on the bandwagon if we could have but a few if we could have but one in a workplace one in a school one in a neighborhood God could reach more than we have ever imagined I need a revival start in this room I need somebody that will say I will take the gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth there there's always this weird burden when you uh, get to you know when you preach for a church the first time because you don't know me and I don't know you and I wish I had the time to tell you everything about me so then some like you wouldn't have to like try to figure me out during the first half of this thing but it's just this weird dynamic that exists right and and so let me just summarize my everything I am to you in a nutshell I am a little as you can see I was telling pastor this is the tallest I'm ever gonna be <laughs> I am a little Nothing, nobody from nowhere, but I am consumed with this idea. There is nothing better than God and bringing somebody to Him. There is nothing better than God and bringing somebody to Him. I think anybody that knows me would know I live by that. I breathe that. I think that. I dream that. My only ambition is for the kingdom of God and to see it grow. Hear me, friend. I want you to be saved. I want your friends to be saved. I want your family to be saved. I want your enemies to be saved. Nothing is better than revival. We've had the privilege of ministering in lots of different settings. We've been in hospitals. We've been in homeless shelters. We've been in street ministry. 
I've been standing on park benches. I've been on sidewalks. I've been in homes. We've had people in our home. We've been in new churches. We've been in big churches, old churches. We've been in Spanish churches. We've been in churches on the other side of the fence. But I would say this, in everything that we have done over the last 17, 18 years of outreach-based ministry, yes, there's probably nothing as effective as what we've seen happen in these tent revivals. Now, I don't want you to confuse what I'm saying here. You do not need a tent to have revival. You do not need a tent to have revival. You know what you need to have revival? Just one person that knows about it and one person that needs it. But nevertheless, I, let me just give you a little bit of a story of what we have the privilege of doing now. I am just so fixed on this idea that God is trying to bring a spiritual awakening to our nation. I think if there's ever been a case study and point for it, it's what we saw play out at the Asbury Revival. We saw people flock to what was uh, great, and it was a movement of repentance, and, but it was essentially just a 24-hour song session of what they could normally get on the radio mixed with people that were praying and repenting and being sincere in the mix, but it was, it was this great case study in the mind modern age where we saw people get on flights from other corners of the world because they heard there was an address you could go to to find something from God and by the thousands they stood out there at night my friend could you imagine what would happen if word got out of what is in here could you imagine where they would come from could you imagine what sins and chains would come to be broken what addicts would come what sick would come what broken would come and so we designed this event that we call the Jesus Tent Revival and we intentionally designed it different than anything we had ever done before and I got no patent on this you're welcome to take it and run with it in whatever form you'd like to but we wanted to have an event we wanted to have a venue an encounter an experience that was not about me it wasn't about a preacher it wasn't about a worship leader it wasn't even about a church but where we could say if you want God the real miracle working Holy Ghost filling God from Scripture. You can come to this address at this time and you will meet Him there. We tried to strip it of everything that didn't need to be there. We tried to pull our own faces and names off of it. But let it ignite a breakthrough in the city. We wanted to see a regional awakening, a modern Azusa. My friend, I don't care if you use a tent or not. God wants there to be an awakening in this region. God wants wants there to be an Azusa right here. Come on, there ought to be people receiving the Holy Ghost. We don't even know how they heard about it. So I get this call to come out and be involved in a tent revival. And when we went out there, we saw what God could do with a few poles and a tarp. And this thing, I have no idea why. I still scratch my head, but it continues to grow. We started with the ability to accommodate 450 people. Then we grew to a tent that will hold 1,300 people. Now we have a tent that will hold 1,700 people. Now when we come into those meetings, often, if not always, the guests will outnumber the members in the church by the end of the event. God wants to do something. Something so big here that this building can't hold it. Hear me. The next building can't hold it. He's not thinking one congregation. I'm telling you, there's Spanish. There's far more. We started like anything else does. One baptismal tank. Then it was two. Now it's three. We started with one changing room, then it was two, then it was four, now it's eight. 
I'm telling you, we've seen unchurched people that travel now from hours away. Some are booking hotels to attend the event, and we have no idea how they even heard about it. During our last revival, we had 20 people from out of state come in for the revival and stay through the duration, while many locals would just hear the sound of the worship and close their businesses to be there under the tent. We had atheists walk in at every one of these events, come in a non-believer, and in a matter of minutes receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and be baptized in Jesus name I remember the first I remember the first one of these we did we had no idea what to expect but man again we set this up thinking man if we could just get them to the presence of God I know that this might be common to you a ritual or routine but it is anything other than that to them I want you to hear it firsthand from somebody that wasn't raised in this I had been looking for the real thing all my life and on the day that I finally walked into a Pentecostal service and felt what you feel tonight it totally transformed Formed and revolutionized my life. I'm convinced if I could ever get your family in here, if I could ever get your co workers in here, if I could ever get the senator in here, if I could ever get the police in here, they're gonna find what I found. So we set up this event to be just that. We prayed, we fasted, and we asked God to give us a breakthrough. We asked God for an awakening. We asked God for Him to descend with all of His power, all of His presence, all of His glory. And then He did. I remember that very first message. And again, we had no idea what was going to happen. I've never been to a tent revival, and the host pastor never been to a tent revival. I was 10 minutes into the first message I've ever preached under a white canopy and some crazy lady sitting on this side stood to her feet 10 minutes in there was no invitation there was no come on there was no reason that she should have been prompted and she lifted her hands and screamed out I want to be baptized my friend I'm telling you that we of course let her get baptized but on her way out 10 other people One stood over there. One stood back there. One stood. Eleven were baptized. Before we even finish the message, you have no idea how many are hungry and ready right now. You have no idea how many are already searching the scriptures now. You have no idea how many want to be done with alcohol, methamphetamine, heroin. You have no idea how many are ready to be done with dead, dry, dusty church. So in that first service, like I said, 10 minutes in, that lady got baptized, 10 more followed her, and I realized we have just pushed into a domain I know nothing about. My friend, revival is not a one-time event. Revival can be not a visitation, but a momentum. It can be ongoing. It can be a mentality. It can be a regional awakening. What I'm praying for here is not an event, not a one-time story. Stop. I'm talking about a city that is changed. I'm talking about where rumors sweep through every neighborhood about what God is doing in this house. I'm talking about where CLC becomes synonymous with where you go for healing and help and hope and the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Revival starters. I need a few revivals. Revival starters. All right. Everybody say slides. Let's do some slides. Nobody believes me unless they see pictures. So let's do some slides. Amen. We go to slide number one if we've got those back there. All right. I didn't know if this would show up, but oh, it's a text message. I'm just putting this up to show you how hungry people are. This is in no way. This is in no way a marginal exception. You're going to see hundreds of these type of events. This is a tech message. I had to grab somebody's phone and and take a picture of it. And there's grass in the background because we're standing under the tent on night one. It says, I was at Chick-fil-A tonight and a worker saw my Jesus shirt. When he saw that Jesus shirt, he 
inquired about the event. And when he inquired about the event, he said he'd be there. Hey, that Chick-fil-A worker that saw a shirt, he picked up a flyer out of the trash. He made it to the event, got baptized in Jesus' name, and God filled him with the Holy Ghost. There is enough hunger that they will dig an invitation out of the trash can. There's enough hunger that if you'll put it on your shirt, they'll come sit on your pew. I'm telling you, they want what you've got. Let's go to the next slide. Man, I love this one. This is Sister Pastor's wife. At the last church we were at, she's baptizing somebody that she invited to church over a year ago who lives over an hour and a half away. Now, when she gave the invitation, she had to chase that person down because they're deaf and it was this convention and blah, blah, blah. But I'm telling you, when they came to church that night, she went up and said, would you baptize me? I heard about this event and I had to be there. She went down, got baptized. You know what she said to Sister Pastor's wife after? She said, the first time I met you, you were following me. But now I'm following you. Wherever you go, I want to be there. I want you to know that invitations you've given that you thought would never be fruitful, under that tent, they're going to be fruitful. I want you to know backsliders are coming back. Come on, they're ready to follow. You go to the next slide. Amen. I, this, this is a, a wonderful story. I don't know that I've ever seen all of this happen in such short succession. This gentleman came in. He was running late to the service, him and his wife. And he came in with, uh, medically speaking, a whack back. Like he was wearing the biggest back brace I've ever seen. Like I almost feel like there's no way that thing is totally legitimate because it looked like a Ninja Turtle shell. And he has a cane and he's walking in with this. The dude could barely move. He comes in halfway through the music set. Well, as he came into the back of that tent, halfway through the sound set, again, I want you to hear me. When they come in to what is in this place, it will change them. He didn't need to hear me preach. I'm not the changing agent. God is. He didn't need to hear the whole song. The song isn't the changing agent. God is. So as he comes up from the back, he lifts his hands and receives the gift of the Holy Ghost before he knew what it was and he was even to a chair. He kept on walking. Got baptized in Jesus name. When he came up out of the water, he realized his back was healed. He tore the back brace off, lifted his cane in the air. Come on, somebody, five minutes. Uh, repent, Holy Ghost, baptize, heal. Five minutes in the presence of God is going to change your marriage. Five minutes in the presence of God is going to change your kids. Five minutes in the presence of God is going to change your co-worker. Just get them there. Get them there. Get them there. Come on, I need a revival starter. That'll get them there. We go to the next slide. Amen. I love this one. This man came in terminal with cancer. And he came in and he... he he made it up the middle aisle. He came to his seat near the front, not in the front, but near the front. And when, when we went through the service, I'm telling you, this dude is pale as a ghost, man, just pale. And, and there's pale and there's clinically pale. He's clinically pale. He is not well. During the service, he literally collapsed onto the ground and could not bring himself to rise again. He was so physically exhausted and I presume anemic. He had told us that he was terminal again. Anyways, we asked if there's anybody in this place that wants special prayer to come to the front and I usually say something very specific like if you have a headache or a back pain I'm not talking about you I mean real big deal stuff you need a miracle or you're in trouble I need you to come not something that can wait and this man literally made his way from collapsed on the ground he crawled on his hands and his feet because he could not rise we prayed for him and when we finished praying for him he said I want to be baptized so we took him straight over and baptized him when he came up out of the water his color literally changed he went down pale and he came up pink he had enough energy he could stand on his own he could jump he could
could dance. He got changed back into his clothes. And that's my kid praying with him when he received the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, God wants to reach everybody. Amen. If we could put up the next slide. Amen. I love, I love this picture. I was, I was so happy to find out that somebody grabbed a picture of this one. I, I just, if I could, I just want you to remember the look on this woman's face. The highlight of ministry for me. I am telling you, the highlight of ministry for me, it is that face right there. I really don't care how big of a stage you put me on. I really don't care how many lights. I don't care how much bigger we can make the LED screen. I don't care what level of promotion they give me with my card. But I'm telling you, when I see that face, everything I have ever done, done to propagate the gospel becomes instantly worth it that woman came to the front for prayer and that is the face of somebody blind who just received their vision for the very first time she in that moment knew that God was real and that he cared about her I want you to remember that face because that is what God wants to do for every last person you meet that's what God wants to do for everybody in the restaurant for everybody at the gas station for everybody we work with and go to school with that's why we do what we do souls pastor souls we go to the next screen this service was another and it was not this is more a reminder to me to tell you what had not at all uncommon every now and then what we'll do and, and it, it, it's kind of just part of air traffic control with as much as going on and as many new people come in at times what we've had to do to maintain order is to say that we if you need this we need you here if you need this we need you here because there are so many that will come to these type events at this particular night what we had done is we had set out chairs and we had said if you need a miracle in your body we want you to come and sit in these chairs and only if you know that God has healed you and you are a hundred percent confident that you are healed then stand up out of the chair and make room for somebody else to sit there but we don't want to stop praying until it's done in that service there were multiple people that were instantly healed not only of vision problems but of deafness some of which would literally pull cochlear implants out of their head because they could now hear out of both ears and I'm telling you my friend not one of these messages were on miracles not one of these messages was hype or fabrication we just preach Jesus and allow an opportunity to meet him I want you to know there is enough power in the name of Jesus that we don't have to fake it or contrive it God is real miracles are real the Holy Ghost is real and if we'll just get them to him he knows exactly what to do and how to do it we go to the next screen. This man, oh, it was such a tremendous story. I wish you could have seen him in that service. He was, he was on fire. I love it when people have us beat. This guy was so on fire. And it's why you see what you see here in front of you. What you'll notice is he's not in a robe. And that's because he said absolutely not. I don't even want to wait long enough to put a robe on. He kicked off his cowboy boots. One of which happened to have a firearm in it. And he crawled over the side of the baptismal tank. And we baptized that dude in his street clothes. But that isn't even the story. The story is the next night he came back smiling ear to ear. And he said, do you remember me, brother? And I said, of course I remember you, brother. He said, well, I knew what had happened. Uh, but I didn't want to tell you until I went to the doctor. I went down blind. But I went to the doctor today, 2020, in both eyes. These people drive themselves back to the tent revival. They never seen anything before. I'm telling you, God is real. He is invested in meeting man. We go to the next slide. 
Oh, I got to tell you this one. I think, I think this is going to be the last one. This one's really quick. So, uh, man, we are, we are in the middle of a service, and uh, we're out there where this is where the tent, Jesus Tent Revival started out in Indiana, and we're preaching out under this tent, and, and, and like in the middle of the message, uh, I hear Harley Davidson pull up, and all kinds of scary salad gets off that Harley Davidson. Leather, tattoos, dreadlocks, vests, all the work uh, gets there, and I think, man, I've heard these horror stories about somebody that pulls up during the message and it just goes real sideways for the preacher shortly after. And I'm sorry, but when I hear a Harley, I just get scared anyways. So when he comes out into that service, I think today is the day that I die. But I'm telling you what, this brother shows up and he falls in love with Jesus. Here's the story. I asked him, I said, man, how'd you hear about this? And he said, you're never going to believe the story. I said, man, you got to tell me. He said, I, I was driving my motorcycle just a few minutes ago through this mall parking lot. Somebody in your church must have been there. And somebody must have given a fly or maybe put it on a car. And, and whoever got it on their car didn't want it. They folded it up. They threw it on the ground. Well, the wind carried that flyer and it got stuck under another car's tire. Well, when I was coming around in that parking lot and came to a stop sign, I looked over and all I could see is the word Jesus coming out from under a tire. And when I saw it, something drew me to it. So I put my kickstand down and I picked up that flyer and I unrolled it and it said the Jesus tent revival and I realized it's happening right now and so I immediately left that parking lot and I came straight here and he said standing next to me in the pastor he said pastor this is what I've been looking for this is my church I'll never miss another service come on go to the next slide this is that brother getting baptized in Jesus name come on somebody Go to the next slide. Come on, come on. Look at that. That's what God's going to do across the city. Go to the next slide. Come on. When they got their new building dedicated, he's still there. Go to the next slide. This is him working their brand new cafe. Come on, somebody. I need a revival starter. How many of these are hidden in our city? How many of these are hidden in our schools? How many of these are hidden in our workplace? Hey, I don't care what they look like. I don't care if they got a different background than you. I don't care if they talk a different native language than you. I don't care if they're tall, short, big, wide. I don't matter. Hey, my friend, I'm telling you right now, God wants to fill every last man, woman, and child with the Holy Ghost. Is there another slide? Amen. If you want to learn more, scan QR code. Have fun with that. Amen. Amen. I want you to know people are hungry for real revival. These, this started at something where we would see 25 people get baptized. And then all of a sudden we wondered, could we ever see 50? And at the next one, 55 people get baptized. Now it's at the place. We're trying to figure out how to facilitate hundreds being baptized. Like you saw in that video in Fort Smith, we had 157 people baptized in one revival. Revival. I'm telling you, you're going to see revival events, not just me, not just the tent. You're going to see revival events that are bigger than entire years of baptizing will happen in single weekends. And news begins to sweep through the city. You get to the place where I don't care if you're at Tractor Supply or Walmart or your bank. When you hand somebody a flyer, they will look back at you and say, I already heard about this. My niece got baptized at this. I heard somebody was healed at this. I've been thinking about coming to this. It's the will of God. This church is the talk of the town. It's the will of God. Every last soul has an opportunity to be here to worship with us to be baptized in Jesus name and get the Holy Ghost 
The news swept so much through Arkansas there that we were approached by the local radio station. They interviewed the pastor live on air, put it on the radio in Bellevue, Florida, where there was news of the 126 people baptized in that small city. And it spread to the point that the press showed up and covered the story. They interviewed the pastor, put it on the front page of the newspaper and the front page of the website. My friend, the tent is just a tool, but again... You don't need a tent to have revival. You need to have a resolve to have revival. You're called to be a revival starter. When I talk about revival, my goal and aim and objective is just to get them to him. You have no idea how much confidence I have in the operation of God. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if there is an atmosphere of faith and we're preaching the cross, that if the loss come, these signs shall follow them that believe. In the first year of doing these events, we saw more miracles than in 16 years of combined ministry preceding those. And the only difference was we started preaching Jesus straighter and heavier and more burdened than we ever had before. And my friend, I'm telling you that God, this is what I really felt in my spirit today that I I needed to get here just because I'm supposed to play a really small, really, really minuscule part of setting something in motion in this city. And it has nothing to do with me. I'm not the name of it. I'm not the guy behind it. But to build your faith to the point that there would be a revival starter that would emerge out of this congregation. That somebody would take to the streets and reach the lost. You'd stand together with me today. I asked them to play one more video, and, and if you have that ready, we'll do that in just one second here. But I asked them to play one more video because I, I, I want you to show, this, this is an example of what I would love your whole city to see. And, and, and again, I want you to think bigger than the tent because this is something that applies. This is going to become part of who we are. We are going to be a church that baptizes people on a Monday night and a Tuesday night and a Wednesday night and a Thursday night and a Friday. We're going to be people that see, see come on, Holy Ghost in fillings and our workplace in Starbucks. I saw Tim Hortons. We could do it Canadian style and see somebody get the Holy Ghost there. I want everybody to get a chance to be by him. When you, when you watch this next clip, man, we, we thought about how to do this a million different ways. But again, I want you to pay attention to what we're advertising. We're not pitching me. We're not pitching a building. We're not pitching a worship leader, a preacher, a song. You, you comprehend this, right? I, I, know that, I know that you may follow preachers, but, but you're in the church. It's different. I, I know that you may like songs, but you're in the church. It's different. What about, what, what would you advertise to somebody that doesn't know the name of a preacher, that doesn't know the words of a song, that wouldn't come out to hear anybody like that, that's not entertained by a building? My friend, the only thing I'm confident that we can deliver on and we can deliver every single time is if we give them Jesus. Amen. If we could play that. Imagine if there was a place that you could go to experience God, not just about singing or a preacher, but an encounter with him, his presence, his power, where worship is sincere and miracles happen. People are getting baptized and lives are changed. That's the purpose of the Jesus Tent Revival. And soon it's coming to you. We want you to have that opportunity to experience him. We've seen him move for thousands around the nation, and we believe God can do something for you now. I imagine you don't need another production. You need his presence. And so we partnered with area churches to get outside of the box and make Jesus the only agenda. In this atmosphere, lives can be changed. And I really believe if you come with hunger and you come with faith, there is no limit to what God can do. This will truly be the greatest revival our city has ever seen. So please come, bring your friends, bring your family, and let's see what God will do.
I want to see everybody in this city get a chance at the power that changed me. When I walked into an apostolic church for the very first time, I knew I found everything that I had been missing. And I had a unique case where I knew that to follow it would cost me everything. And when I made that decision to follow God and it made its way back to my parents, I got kicked out. I lost everything. I became homeless overnight and I knew that would happen. But I had found something I loved more than any relationship I'd ever had, than anything I'd ever been provided or afforded. And I didn't care the cost. I just wanted the cross. And we're asking of this people in this city to change virtually everything they've known. They're going to have to live different and think different and act different and walk different and talk different. Uh, but I tell you, if we could ever get them to the one, they will fall in love with him as I did and as you did. And there's no telling what God would do in their life. And all it takes to ignite that fire is one revival starter. I was in another city and preaching. And, uh, and the, the, the host pastor said, there's someone I need you to meet. And normally when they say that, it's another pastor friend or somebody said, no, no, no. This is a mechanic. I need you to meet him. He got loads me in the car. He drives me an over an hour away to meet a mechanic. And, and I say, hey, man, good to meet you. We'll call him Jerry. I say, good to meet you, Jerry. Uh, I, I guess I need to meet you. And I kind of just confused. Why, why are we here? Why are we doing this? And, and he said, oh, he brings people here a lot. Uh, because um, he said, I just can't stop telling people about Jesus. At the last revival their church had, again, I didn't preach it. It's not my tent. It's not my event. I just need you to hear this Jerry. Jerry brought more than 75 people to the revival. Some like 52 of them got baptized in Jesus' name. I'm thankful for the Peters and the Pauls of the church, but we need a whole lot more Jerry's if we're gonna have this measure of revival. Somebody would say, oh, man, that's old fashioned. Nobody does that stuff anymore. It might be. I guess I'm old fashioned then. But you know, there is no Paul unless there's an Ananias who door knocked that dude. And when the door flung open, he said, Brother Saul, and he put his hands on him and prayed for him. God healed his eyes. God filled him with the Holy Ghost. He baptized him in Jesus' name. There's no Paul without an Ananias reaching to him. And look at the downstream revival that came from one revival starter. If you would, for the next few minutes, I want to invite you to step out of where you're seated and come to the aisles or come to the front. I want to have a time where we pray, and I want to pray that God would entirely shake us, bend us, change us, use us. He's trying to set something in motion right now. I'm telling you, there is a momentum that is building in the unseen. I'm telling you that God is trying to do something in this city that is far bigger than what we we have seen before come on somebody you're either going to sit on the sidelines of it or you'll be right in the center of what God is trying to do I beg of you I beg of you ask the Lord to change you ask the Lord to use you come on I know there's a revival starter in this room I know there's somebody that's discontented with where they're at I know there's somebody that says I'm thankful for the building now let's fill it up let's fill it up come on I'm asking for your burden to sift through the surface right
Come on, it takes one. It takes one to ignite something. It takes one Evan Roberts to change a country. It takes one Seymour to see hundreds of thousands receive the Holy Ghost. What could God do with what is in this room right now? Oh! Come on, come on. Come on, playing church isn't enough. Uh, come on, singing along isn't enough. Uh, just being here on a Sunday is not enough. Uh, God, use me. Lord, shake us of any apathy that would remain in our hearts. Shake us of anything that is complacent. God, we want more of you. And we want to win more to you. Lord, I am desperate to know you face to face. I am desperate to be near to you and bring others to you. God, give us a revival unlike one we have ever seen before. I need you to lift your voice right now. Come on, God is moving in this place. God, give us a genuine, sincere love for the cross and for the lost. I pray that you would captivate our attention. I pray that you would be the apple of our eye and our greatest affection. You are our first love. You are priority. You're the one thing that we want. Above all and before all, we are obsessed with you. We want more of you. Come on, the Holy Ghost is in this place right now. Amen. I want to allow the Lord to speak to us. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, just, would you just give him but a few minutes? Come on, somebody. Come on, the Holy Ghost is trying to speak to you right now. I'll get out of the way, but come on, somebody, don't miss this.
Jesus. Jesus. Amen. We had, we had a service, and there was such great faith in that room. Man, I'm telling you, when faith is in the room, it does not matter what persuasion you come from. It's going to change you. And there was a pastor that walked in that was adverse to everything we believe. Adverse to the idea of miraculous healing. Adverse to how we worship. Adverse to receiving the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. And in that service they walked into, they lifted their hands and God filled them with the Holy Ghost. So the remainder of the revival, they brought their entire church out and person after person received the very same thing. I want to tell you what I want to see. I want such a measure of God to be in our service from this moment on. I want there to be such a degree and momentum of revival that people receive the Holy Ghost with ease. They are changed in their mind and persuasions that they're healed instantly in their body that they're delivered of addiction the moment they set foot in the atmosphere I want you to pray for a God breakthrough Lord we're asking right now that we would have a new and a greater measure of you take us deeper come on somebody take us deeper in you let us see your glory descend dispatch your angels in every one of our services let us have earth shaking come on hell tearing revival Jesus Jesus and somebody say I'll help start it (laughs) 